John Quincy Adams once said, If your actions inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more, you are a leader. Leadership is arguably the single most important value your organization can benefit from. But how do we incorporate it into our businesses and into our lives? How do we embody it in the workplace? And how do we develop it, not only in ourselves, but in those around us and below us as well? Because true leadership is not just about developing yourself or managing others. It's about affecting positive growth and transformation in the people you work with. In this course, we're going to show you how to do exactly that. So there's a crisis in leadership today, perhaps one of the greatest we've ever faced. And it's all because of the leadership gap. You see, 77% of companies are currently experiencing leadership shortfalls, with that number expected to rise to 84% in the coming year or so. What that means is that the older generation of leaders at various levels of the company ladder are, well, getting old. They're retiring. They're moving on. They're dying. And thanks to the demographic winter that the developed world has been cooking up for itself since the 1960s, those leaders are not getting replaced by younger people fit for the job. Or rather, they might be getting replaced, but the pickings kind of slim. Because for the most part, it's going to be millennials filling the gaps. And I'm not here to bash millennials, but they really haven't been getting shaped into leaders throughout their lives or careers. Leadership is simply a value that's been getting ignored for the last few decades, both in business and in education. So not only do we have a situation where there's a smaller population of potential leaders to choose from, but the ones who are there don't have the ideal level of leadership skills. In fact, in a recent study, 63% of millennials acknowledged they haven't been receiving the leadership development they need in order to face the challenge ahead. For all the reasons above, a whopping 89% of company executives insist that strengthening organizational leadership is a top priority. And yet, less than 5% of businesses have implemented leadership development at all levels. Of the small number of companies who do have leadership development initiatives, only 10% of executives think that those initiatives have a clear impact on their businesses. That's right, a whopping 90% think they're ineffective. To bring this dismal briefing to its conclusion, 56% of companies are not ready to meet their leadership needs, and 71% don't believe their current leaders are capable of leading them into the future. Pretty bleak, right? Well, don't throw the towel in just yet. There is some hope. You see, for companies that do have mature leadership development strategies, the number facing a leadership gap falls to just 49%. Now, let's be clear, that's still a crisis. But compared to that 77% across the board we mentioned earlier, that means that doing a good job of developing leaders can make a company 45% more likely to avoid the leadership gap and come out of this unprecedented crisis alive and well. So, with that in mind... Let's dive into this training. Our course is going to consist of a series of critical discussion points. These are designed to cover this broad topic as thoroughly as possible, to encourage growth in these vital areas, and to facilitate a real and fruitful discussion within your organization about how you can each improve on these essential characteristics both at work and in your personal lives. Some of these will be pretty lengthy, and some of these discussion points will be relatively straightforward and brief. At the very end of this roadmap comes the most important final step. Discussion time. Do not skip this. This is the most important part of this training. When you finish this course, 
You need to spend at least an hour or so going over the questions we supply at the end as a group. Whoever is the head honcho in the group should designate a facilitator whose responsibility it is that each question is covered and that everyone, time permitting, is able to have their say. Make sure all contributions are valued, all suggestions considered, and all opinions respected. So, let's move into the first discussion point. Lead by example. Effective leadership involves showing, not just telling. If you want your employees to do what you want them to do, then you should set the tone and demonstrate how it should be done. Excluding yourself from your own rules is a surefire way to lose your employees' respect and make you unlikable. Practice what you preach, even if it's just for simple guidelines such as being professional or always being on time. Never stop improving. Great leaders are constantly finding ways to improve themselves and find new skills in areas that they can learn and master. You should be open to the opportunities that come your way to achieve greater heights and pursue new possibilities. Prioritize growth and constantly challenge your team to be better versions of themselves. Be goal-oriented. Don't focus too much on the details and always keep the big picture in mind. Create a list of personal, team, and organizational goals and come up with a definite plan and strategy to achieve these goals. Direct your team's focus and energy into prioritizing urgent or crucial goals. These goals shouldn't be static. Instead, periodically evaluate them to adjust as needed. Keep in mind that when your goals and expectations are clearly defined, your team members can better understand the end result that they're working towards as a unit. Furthermore, it's easier to monitor progress and determine failures and successes. Take responsibility. True leaders do whatever needs to be done. However, when things go wrong, you shouldn't point fingers or play the blame game. You should take responsibility for your team's actions and choices and their results. In doing this, you'll show that you're worthy of your team's trust and respect. Nonetheless, this doesn't mean that incompetent or reckless behavior from a team member should be swept under the rug. It just means that when mistakes happen, you don't assign blame or offer up a scapegoat. Instead, you identify the source of the problem, come up with a course of action to correct the situation, and prevent it from ever happening again. Be decisive. Decisiveness refers to the ability to make decisions efficiently and to obtain a specific result. Leaders who are decisive decision makers appear more credible to their team members. A fast, well-informed decision, coupled with a sense of personal responsibility, shows your confidence and effectiveness as a leader. No matter what industry you belong in, you're going to face difficult situations where quick and clear-cut actions are necessary. When it's time to decide, you should believe in your ability to guide your team to the right outcome and provide an impactful decision that aligns with your organization's goals and vision. Give credit where it's due. Don't be that boss who takes all the credit for your team's success and hard work. Don't hog all the spotlight to yourself. Be team-oriented and give credit where it's due. Effective team leaders recognize that any situation, any success, any achievement within the organization is a joint effort. Remember that no one wants to follow a selfish leader. Furthermore, it'll be difficult for you to motivate your team when the next big project rolls around because they know that their contributions and talents won't get recognized. Be confident. Projecting confidence is not an easy thing to do. Some people are natural at looking at ease with themselves and their skills, while others may require a little bit more effort. Have faith in yourself and your capabilities, and remember that you don't need to be loved or accepted by other people to be a good leader. Be authentic. Authenticity means being comfortable in your own skin. It's never a good idea to put on a fake persona or imitate leadership styles that don't really suit your natural personality. Instead, be proud of your true self. Draw from your personal values, strengths, and experiences. By standing up for who you really are, you inspire others to be the best versions of themselves. Engage in honest and open communication. One of the hallmarks of effective leadership is an honest and open line of communication with your team. Remember that it's crucial to be straightforward and ethical in your interactions, especially when you expect your team to follow your example. 
Be flexible and change up your communication style depending on the team member or the situation. This also means you'll need to take the time to figure out which mode of communication each person prefers. You want to make sure that you are heard and understood, but remember that communication is a two-way street. Be a great listener and show that you're genuinely interested in what other people have to say. Be direct, transparent, and honest. And be consistent and constant with your communication. Remember that your team expects you to be there for them, especially in difficult situations. So make yourself accessible and provide your team with several ways to contact you when they need help. Connect with your team members. Find ways to connect with your team members and achieve a mutual sense of trust and respect. Having a real and personal connection with your team will create the trust that is crucial when ensuring accountability and boosting performance. To create a genuine and positive connection with your team, take the time to learn more about their interests, their hobbies, preferences, strengths, and weaknesses. These things will give you a deeper insight into their personal goals and motivation. Get in the trenches and spend time with the team to create a deep bond built on shared purpose. Encourage personal and professional growth. As a leader, you should be invested in the growth and success of your team members. Provide them with opportunities that will improve their skills or help them learn new ones. Encourage them to do their best and be ready to take on challenges. Be ready to inspire and motivate. Remember that cheering your team on is a crucial aspect of being an effective leader. Set aside a budget, even a small one, dedicated to the professional and personal growth of your team. You can use this to organize training sessions, purchase leadership e-courses and books, or set up a mentorship program. Help turn them into leaders by encouraging freedom, accountability, and creativity. Mentor your team regularly and teach them how to be excellent in their tasks and determined to achieve their goals. Be positive. As much as you want every day to go as you've planned, you're bound to encounter the occasional roadblock. The way you handle an adverse situation speaks volumes for your leadership skills. Research shows that when people are able to identify the good in any problematic situation, they're better able to react with clarity and rationality. Before you come up with a solution to any kind of problem at work, try to think of three positive things about the situation. This will reduce your stress and help you be more productive. A leader that focuses on solutions rather than problems is more likely to foster an engaged and productive team. A confident and enthusiastic outlook serves as a source of inspiration for your employees. Be receptive to new ideas. Change is inevitable, and those who try to maintain the status quo will only get left behind. Be receptive to the new ideas and perspectives that your team members bring to the table. Change-capable leaders drive innovation, engagement, and success. Encourage your team members to provide their insights and ideas. Knowing that they have an active role in your decision-making will make them feel more empowered and engaged. Take the time to talk to them one-on-one -on -one to get their suggestions on how certain things can be improved. You can also hold quarterly meetings to develop initiatives that can benefit the team and the organization. Keep learning. Effective leaders are the product of a never-ending process of learning and development. You don't want to be the type of leader with outdated knowledge and strategies that are no longer applicable or relevant. Don't be complacent and strive to learn something new every day about your team, your industry, and the world. Work on your leadership skills by attending conferences or enrolling in courses. Don't be afraid to venture into uncharted territories. Visit other departments within the organization, talk to other leaders within your network, and get to know outside consultants that your company can employ. Read books, blogs, and research reports. Participate in external industry events where you can learn about trends, discover new developments and solutions, and expand your network. Be empathetic. Empathetic leaders show compassion and care. When you're able to empathize with your team members' feelings and situations, you'll make them feel valued, respected, and understood. Before you respond to a mistake, put yourself in their shoes. Take some time to compose yourself and your thoughts. Come up with realistic deadlines and expectations. If it's something that you can't even accomplish yourself, it might be time to rethink your decision. Recognize their work and efforts regularly. And when you're reflecting on your actions or decisions, try to visualize yourself as one of your own employees and ask yourself whether or not it inspires you to be more productive or perform better at work. Share your vision. 
A clear and definite vision is essential to effective leadership. A clear vision will give your leadership direction, and without it, no one in the company will have a sense of purpose. If you don't already have one, create one that embodies your hopes, ideals, and goals for your team and for the entire organization. Share this vision with your team members to guide them in their tasks and create in them a desire for growth and improvement. By sharing with them your mental picture of the future, you make your plans more attainable and strengthen your commitment to achieving them. Manage your emotions. Great leaders know how to control their emotion because they understand that every reaction, whether it's positive or negative, will have an effect on their team and the overall success of the organization. A leader who can't manage his emotions well can bring down morale and wreak havoc on the company's bottom line. Depersonalize issues. Don't take any of your team's actions personally. In fact, it's almost never the case that the issue is about you. Never immediately respond to any feedback that you receive or problem that you encounter. Take the time to acknowledge it, assess what you're dealing with, and come up with a list of possible actions or solutions. Admit when you're wrong. A lot of people think that admitting that you're wrong means you're weak. However, the opposite is actually true. Nothing says strong and confident than having the ability to admit your mistake. Remember that being a leader is not about being right or perfect all the time. It's about accountability. If you did or said something, then you should be accountable for its results. Don't try to cover up or blame other people for your mistakes. Instead, own up to what you did wrong and learn from it. It's a great opportunity to let your team know what you've learned. This is an effective way to build connection and trust. Learn how to spot talent. One of the most important aspects of good leadership is knowing how to identify the people who can move your vision forward. However, hiring the right team members is just part of the process. You should also know how these people with their diverse backgrounds and abilities can work together harmoniously and effectively. Learn to recognize the strengths of your people. When you do, you can then introduce strategies and plans to help them improve their existing skills, compensate for their weaknesses, and grow in the best possible direction. Support their development and encourage them to fight for their dreams. Encourage independence and flexibility. Once you're certain that your team knows how to get the job done right, stay out of their way. Remember that you hired these people because you believe in their capability to produce your desired results. Sometimes strategies don't work the way you want them to. Instead of getting frustrated over the situation, encourage your team to adapt and come up with something different. Make sure that your people have all the support, training, and tools they need to make the right decisions. Cheer them on, but step back and let them do their job. Trust in the fact that you've chosen smart, capable people to handle it. There may be times when you'll have to step up and assist with tougher decisions, especially when there's a struggle to reach a consensus. Learn to recognize these instances when your team needs a leader to choose the right path. Hold people accountable. When you delegate tasks, you should make it clear that you have specific expectations and that you're holding the person accountable for results. Always follow up on your expectations. After concluding a meeting with your team member, immediately create a follow-up date on your calendar. Remember that if you don't follow up on expectations, it sends the message that the task isn't important. Be consistent and don't implement a different set of rules for certain individuals or groups. Your team members should be accountable for both their actions and the consequences of these actions. For example, maybe a salesperson is working hard and placing a lot of calls, and that's great. But if they're not selling anything, that's still a failure. And don't negotiate. Performance declines when people know that they can come to you to negotiate your expectations, standards, deadlines, or goals. Be quick to praise. Let people know when they've done good work promptly, often, and in public. You should definitely celebrate big successes together, but you need to also acknowledge the small ones. Your employees must feel that their contributions, no matter the size, are helpful and valuable to the organization. However, if your feedback is focused on constructive criticism or opportunities to grow and develop, do it privately. Remember that no one wants to feel berated or admonished in public. Offer rewards and recognition. One of the best ways to make your team members feel happy and appreciated at work is to offer recognition and rewards. Come up with a reward system by asking your employees what they'd like to receive when they achieve certain goals or milestones. You might be surprised at some of their answers, but this way, 
you'll feel confident that you're giving them something they actually want. Don't send them standard messages of congratulations or appreciation. It's always better to make them personal and unique to each person. Treat the team to lunch every now and then. Even if nothing momentous has happened, it's an opportunity to know more about them and bond with the team. Motivate and inspire. Simply telling your staff what they have to do is not enough. Getting them to be genuinely passionate about your strategies or ideas is what leadership is all about. You should let them know your compelling reasons and motivations and make them understand how crucial their role is in executing the overall vision. Constantly motivate and inspire your team members to engage, grow, innovate, be more productive, and accomplish greater things. Remember that it's easy to force a subordinate to do what you want them to do, but getting them to rally around your vision is what will set you apart as an effective leader. Encourage creativity. One of the most desirable characteristics for a leader is their ability to inspire intellectual stimulation. You should be able to encourage and drive your team to express their creativity. At the same time, you should provide them with ample support and tools to come up with new and innovative ideas. Encourage collaboration. When you brainstorm and work together, you'll get more diverse and fresh perspectives on a project. Personal contact with other people helps unleash new and wild ideas. Take risks and assign tasks to people who have never handled them before. Encourage them to find new and more effective ways to complete things. Ask your team for suggestions and recommendations about improving specific strategies or projects. Create a flexible workplace. If creativity is a big part of their job, some employees work and think better when they're not tethered to a desk all day. Provide them with a separate space where they can clear their mind, relax, or get inspired by a new scenery. Be humble. Remember that humility is not a sign of weakness or a lack of confidence. Instead, it shows inner strength. Great leaders are confident about their skills, but seem no reason to constantly remind people of what they're capable of. Humble leaders inspire more respect and loyalty compared to those who bask in the glory all by themselves. While it's important to let your bosses know about your own contributions, you should also acknowledge the efforts and hard work of your team and always put that front and center. Inconsistent leaders can cause a lot of frustration and problems. The people who work for them often spend so much time wondering how they should proceed or nursing grudges because they can't predict what their leader wants. Inconsistency is thus not desirable because it reduces efficiency and lowers morale. Stay organized. While having a goal or vision is important, coming up with definitive and clear-cut ways to achieve those goals is just as crucial. Staying organized is key here. Always plan your day beforehand. List down every task according to priority and deadline. Make sure that you have enough time to deal with unexpected and urgent issues. Don't let your inbox run your day. Set aside specific times during the day to check and reply to your email. Make sure that your desk is clutter-free. Remember that it's your workspace, so if you want to get things done, keep the space available. Respect people's time. Be realistic about the amount of time you give your team members to accomplish their tasks and do their jobs. Remind them if they ever feel overwhelmed with the work you give them, they can always ask for help from you or from their other team members. Start and end meetings on time. Be specific about a deadline or a time limit. When you say that something should be done by a certain date, your employees should get it done by then. When you tell them that you need five minutes of their time, you should only spend five minutes with them. If you're late or running behind schedule, make sure that your team knows about it. Ask for feedback. Leadership involves constant improvement, and in order to do this, you have to know which areas you're lacking in. Give your team the opportunity to give feedback about your leadership. Having this kind of initiative demonstrates your willingness to learn and improve. Use an anonymous feedback questionnaire so that people can be completely honest about their answers. Be comfortable with conflict resolution. Workplace conflicts are unavoidable, especially if you have a diverse staff. If you avoid addressing or resolving conflicts because you're uncomfortable, friction will continue to exist and it'll eventually become too stressful for your team to work in the same place. Remember that you have resources that you can use to resolve conflict. 
This can be an HR staff or even a formal mediation process that's implemented within your organization. However, you shouldn't just pass on the entire responsibility to HR. You should, at the very least, try to ask questions, remain neutral, offer guidance, and help each party see the conflict from the other's perspective. Cultivate a diverse workplace. A diverse workplace fosters innovation. An organization that fails to embrace diversity condemns themselves to the same bias and narrow focus that they've been used to. There's no room for growth and development in an environment where all the people have the same opinions or points of view. Team members who come from different cultures, backgrounds, and perspectives can offer new skills and unique ways to approach a problem or situation. As a leader, you should always be respectful of people's opinions and be open to hearing differing points of view. Constantly reassess your leadership style. Strategies change over time, people mature, technologies innovate, and entire organizations grow and transform. How leaders adapt and develop is one of the key factors that affect organizational change. Developing your leadership style involves applying your strengths within a dynamic environment and creatively motivating your people. However, your style shouldn't be static. As your organization changes, so should your leadership style. Always adapt your current style to the demands of a specific situation. Don't be afraid of failure. A failure is an opportunity to learn and a crucial step towards success. Remember that not all decisions you make will have a positive outcome. The key is not being right all the time. It's learning how to deal with failures and using them as motivation to achieve something greater. When you fail, embrace it and don't run away from it. For instance, if your project went over budget or if your team missed an important deadline, don't dwell too long on your errors. Instead, meet with your team, identify the source of the problem, and come up with a set of solutions that will help you avoid a similar fate in the future. Encourage teamwork and collaboration. Any achievement from your company is the result of the combined efforts of all of its employees. When you work together, your team will feel as though they're part of something bigger than themselves. Come up with a clear and compelling goal or vision. Be clear about your expectations. Provide your team with well-defined lists of individual and collective roles and tasks. Make sure that the team is cohesive. Have a daily huddle where members discuss their tasks for the day. This will allow everybody to be on the same page and prevent competition or duplication of responsibilities. Encourage socialization outside of work. Organize team dinners, company outings, and team building activities. These are great ways to break down any walls of prejudgment and encourage them to learn about their colleagues. Find a mentor. Many leaders believe that they no longer need a mentor once they get to a certain point in their lives. However, even the most successful leaders in the world acknowledge that the only way for them to grow is to seek the advice and guidance of more experienced mentors. A mentor will help provide a fair, rational, and objective perspective. Mentors have years of experience and insights that you can learn from. They can help you see and improve your strengths and work on your weaknesses. They can motivate and inspire you to be stronger, more confident, more decisive. They can expand your network and open doors for you in other companies, industries, or professions. Be more patient. Don't overreact to the mistakes that your team makes every now and then. Instead, be more patient and compassionate. Give them the benefit of the doubt. After all, nobody wants to or intentionally tries to fail. It's true that emotions can run high when failures are made. But stay calm, take a deep breath, and take the time to figure out exactly what went wrong. Never be a source of negativity, especially in high-stress situations. Instead, inspire them to be resilient and optimistic. Step up during times of crisis. Crises can happen and often are unavoidable, both at work or at home. Being able to respond quickly and efficiently during these times of adversity demonstrate how good of a leader you are. When faced with stressful situations like these, step up and be the guiding light that your team needs. Don't see it as a setback. Consider it an opportunity. Since we know a crisis will come along every once in a while, be prepared. Create a plan of action for every possible scenario you can think of. And if possible, practice them with your team. Be empathetic. In most cases, simple and sincere apologies will often calm even the angriest customer or client. 
If you have to issue an apology as the leader, it should come directly from you and not through the company's website or social media platforms. Let the effective parties know your sincerity and genuine regrets. Don't always play it safe. Take some calculated risks that have potential for a big payoff. And be honest and open with your team. You don't want your people to be left in the dark wondering what's happening or how they should feel. Keep them in the loop to reduce their speculation and anxiety about any given crisis. And finally, be kind. Always emphasize the merits of kindness in the workplace. Kindness takes on numerous forms. It can be as simple as a smile or openly showing pride in someone else's success or accomplishments. Install a compliment box where people can write compliments, praises, and positive words for their team members. For every daily or weekly huddle, make sure you have something kind or encouraging to say. Recognize and appreciate your employees regularly. A personal commendation from their boss will brighten up anyone's day and motivate them to work harder and perform better. And now, it's discussion time. The most important part of this training. Whoever's the head honcho in the group should designate a facilitator whose responsibility it is that each question you see on your screen is covered and that everyone, time permitting, is able to have their say. Make sure all contributions are valued, all suggestions considered, and all opinions respected. 